Yeah, uh, I would like you to, let's say, extend more on the concept of data deluge. Data deluge. Yes. And uh, after this uh, prediction, okay, prediction makes science powerful. Yes. Now we need to put this into some context, uh, context for prediction. Can you give us, let's say, extend on this, like uh, climate change, global change for prediction and so on? Right. Well, some of the best examples have been done, and the best ones I can cite is the work of, of Town and his students, and Jorge and his students, um, where, say, they are working with um, species of malaria uh, and uh, mapping their distribution using um, uh, collection records. So all of that descriptive information is mapped and then they uh, produce a, an ecological niche model of we may not have records of that species in a certain spot but where would it be predicted to have survivability on that on a on a space landscape immediately that becomes a prediction a prediction where that species can spread to if we don't know it's there and with climate change, with it getting warmer, will it go from the equator, say, into more northern and southerly climes where it's colder? Another prediction, based on the ecological niche modeling. And then, which of those species of mosquitoes are carrying dengue? What are some of the other diseases that those mosquitoes are carrying town, besides dengue? Well. Right. So then that becomes a predictive model for governments, for health organizations, both regional, local, national, global. Um, in 50 years, with climate change continuing the way it is, uh, here's how dengue or, or some other awful disease will spread into a certain geographic area which then tells policymakers where they should apply their resources to stop it. Rather than applying it everywhere, you can, we can pinpoint it's going to spread there, 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 and there, according to our, the best science of the time. You can do the same thing with the spread of pollinators and say the pollination of essential crops. For example, um, we haven't done this work, but I can think of this as a theoretical example. Kansas is one of the bread baskets of the world. It grows uh, an awful lot of wheat. The wheat has to be pollinated. With climate change, the fields of wheat are not moving, but the pollinators may be moving further north. So what happens when the wheat is not pollinated or only half the wheat is pollinated? What does that do to the economy of Kansas, the social dimensions and the social um, uh, consequences to inhabitants of Kansas? And what does it do in terms of providing the United States with enough wheat for food and then for export? So here's where you're bringing together the predictive modeling in biodiversity, in pollination, in agriculture, and then in the social dimension, economics, demography, and so forth.